Hello and welcome to this first podcast in the iView series. It's commissioned by iNews Pinpoint Publications and comes to you courtesy of the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh, the University of Edinburgh and the generosity of our sponsors. In this first podcast, I'll be talking to two previous trainees, Tariq Aslam and Pete Hackett. They were trainees here in Edinburgh many years ago. We'll be taking a trip down memory lane thinking about the highs and the lows of their journeys following being a trainee for them, and also tracing a pathway through their, to their current career and what they see as lying ahead in our specialty of ophthalmology. I think it's always good to try and touch base with trainees, even though many years might have elapsed since they were working with you. I think the highlight of this is to also call them friends, and so it is, in many ways, a general chat, but it's going to be informed by their own take on where the specialty is heading. It's in two parts. I hope you enjoy part one, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. First of all, it's great to see you, Tarek and Pete. It's been a good few years, and we're gathered here to talk about visions. and. You're both smiling with a, a slightly winsome smile, but I know what's, what you're thinking. You're thinking, here we are in Edinburgh, the grey city where we all learn our trade in ophthalmology. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about the past, but also look into the future. But to start with, our listener, I think we'll have a listener, probably in Leicester, will, um, will probably not know us even though we are world famous, <laughs> some more world famous than others. So by way of introduction, um, I've got some questions. Wait, did you see how Pete's voice? <laughs> <laughs> I have a few I've questions. I've got some press for this, Harry. <laughs> uh, Pete, I'm glad to see you've yeah. got some prep. You're the only one of the three of us feel, that has. You know, make me look bad, as usual. Yeah, where's your PowerPoint? Like... Where's your PowerPoint, Harry? Yeah. Um, so uh, our listener in Leicester has asked, um, a few questions, a false choice. It's just as well we're here in the Royal College of Surgeons of Edinburgh where you last did a false choice MCQ, Tari. Thanks uh, for bringing that up. I, I mean, yeah, but yeah. we won't, we won't uh, touch on that. No, I know it's a sensitive spot. But, um, <laughs> but uh, our listener in Leicester was, was really interested to um, start by getting to know you. And uh, the false choice series of questions um, have to be responded to rapidly. Um, intuitively and without too much referring to your notes, Pete. It's unfair. Oh, okay, so yeah. the first question um, our Leicester listener would like to ask yeah. is um, what do you prefer, tea or coffee? Coffee. No, we both at the same time. How it's the coffee? first of us. <laughs> okay, so he's abstaining. Neither. I'd, I'd like to say for the, the rest of the questions, and there will be a good number of questions, abstention is not an option. So you have to go for the least ones. The second question is breakfast. Muesli or Weetabix? Muesli. Frosties. <laughs> peep, peep, peep. Okay. Okay, let's try again. Let's Weetabix. Go. Okay. Thank you. Um, and the third question, we're both, well, I say we're both fairly trim. Pete, um, <laughs> if you were forced to, would you do a gym or a swim? A swim. Gym. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, and here, this is the killer. <clears throat> if you had to read from cover to cover a particular magazine, forward slash journal, would it be BJO or iNews? I'm BJO. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> well, that's curious because, in a way, I. I it would have been I News previously. When you read it's so. gone down the hill. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay, so. since a particular date. Um, but of course, we sadly miss you, Tarek. Um, uh, if you want to come back, don't bother because, <laughs> because your post has been filled uh, more than adequately by David Lockington. But um, sad as that may seem, we um, need to talk about a hamper, by the way. Um, there was an agreement that we still get a hamper. A I'm not sure that that was uh, signed off okay. uh, time by upper upper level. <laughs> um, but in a way, that's uh, 
That's very touching because it's our news that sort of brought us together uh, for this podcast. And um, before we touch on on visions of the future, we all learnt our trade here in sunny Edinburgh. What's what's an abiding, lasting memory from back when you were we were all trainees here? If well, there's a single one of my memories was, I think I was. I was in a clinic and we were looking at somebody's macula. When you say just, we, is it the royal we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a lens, and somebody said, we were arguing about whether there was fluid there or not. Somebody said, you know what, there's this new machine. There's this new machine that the prof has got, and uh, it, will, it will help us see whether there's fluid there or not. Mm. I was like, well, where is it? Where is it? And then somebody found the key. It was a secret. No, not everybody's allowed to use it. So somebody found this key. It was in this little cupboard. And it was called an OCT. And it mm. pulled out this scan. And that was the first time we saw that actually we were all wrong. And this was a completely flat. There was no edema at all. But then we had to quickly, secretly lock it up again and pretend we'd never used it. Uh, and that's how old I am. That's it was like before and after we had this before OCT OCD. machine that was being kept secret. It was like a research tool. Well, you weren't supposed to go into that room, Terry. I know. Uh, uh, yeah, it we. Was long because <laughs> it was, you, you'd probably break it. But but that's that's, uh, that's going back a little bit. Pete, how about you? Well, my lasting memory is um, medical retina related, but in a different way. It's. Uh, when Tarek, you and I used to drive over to the Infectious Diseases Clinic in Tarek's Mr. Bean car. But at the end of the clinic, when Tarek was driving us back to base, we stopped off at the Museum of Modern Art, mm. and you treated us to a can of iron brew and a slice of lemon drizzle cake. And it was that that sold me on medical retina. Yeah. That it wasn't medical retina, it was, it was a treat of a juice and a cake, and, and, the, and the bribery involved it sold me that as a career. Isn't that, that's really touching, um, and uh, I wish uh, I'd done that a bit more, or maybe bought you a tea or a coffee. Yeah. Tea, um, yeah. But you um, wouldn't have drunk it. It was interesting it. that you went to the Museum of Art, and uh, basically your memories are of the cafe. Contrasting interests and uh, motivations for becoming... What shall, uh, people who like the macula, macula files, is that a word? Um, it conjures up a slightly spooky image. It sounds like an only connect team, doesn't it? I think maculologist. Ma- you prefer ma- macul- maculologist. Yeah. Yeah, what about you? Macula file or maculologist? Um, University <laughs> challenge or only connect? Wait, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's cake lovers. <laughs> cake lovers. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting, those years of flow by, I'd forgotten both of those um, touching memories. Uh, but we all have to do other things instead of the man. There are times when we are um, given another forced choice to do either a glaucoma clinic or a general clinic. So as an add-on to our listener from Leicester's list of questions, if you had to do a glaucoma clinic or a general clinic, what would it be? Tarek, you first. Ooh, uh, no, it has to be quick. Uh, glaucoma. I have glaucoma as well. Don't it's say it with such a pain. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a nice choice, Val. Why do you do these horrible choices? But what, to what, what, why, why not a general clinic? Mm-hmm. Actually, it's funny that because actually I do enjoy seeing the eye emergencies. Okay. And got that live on air because you actually get the most reward out of it because actually make people better mm. within a couple of weeks. The red eyes, anyway. So. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, but that doesn't say I was working arc every, in the eye cast every week. Uh, this is being recorded, Pete. So mm-hmm. when your job plan comes, up, <laughs> <laughs> there will be an evidence base. Um, yeah, it's going to be an ulterior motive. <laughs> yeah. But but that is interesting. But we we're, we're drawn to the macula, particularly A and D. Um. Regrets? Uh, no regrets? Je regret rien with regard to heading towards AMD? None at all. It's an exciting field to be working in. Well, I was actually heading towards doing, you do might remember this, I was supposed to be doing a paediatric fellowship. You were, yeah. Uh, and was all set up to be doing peds and was interested in it. And um, I went to a AAO when it was in Vegas. Uh, this is a long time ago, like before, before 
I just after around 2000. Was I there? You were there, yeah. Um, and oh, you weren't at the conference. You were around. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. And um, I went to a lecture on the action of the inferior oblique muscle. And um, I think it's all right. Just get focused. Is I that, could see all these posters around. Like is that a thing? It's a muscle. There's, 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 you know, around the eye, it moves. Mm-hmm. It's like part of the muscles that, that do that. Uh, but there are posters everywhere saying this new t- this new drug's coming out called uh, Lucentis, and it's going to revolutionise. So it's like, no, avoid that. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. Just focus on what you're supposed to be doing. Pediatrics. Sat in this lecture, and at the end of the hour, I was absolutely drained. I went home, had a shower, and then I came out of the shower and <laughs> did quickly phone. I, I phoned from USA to the eye room to tell you that mm. to cancel my paediatric fellowship and I was switching uh, over to that, the retina. That, that does ring a bell, uh, but if I was there in Vegas with you... Um, you you weren't there, you never... I don't think so. Well, I don't remember. No. Uh, what what goes there. on in Vegas, yeah. of course, The, the, the uh, director was not happy yeah. <laughs> about my choice because everything had to be... But was I the director? No, no, it was... Somebody else. Um, <laughs> was, Moving on. Yeah, it was <laughs> he's just broken the rule about speaking what happens in Vegas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know he's leaked. He yeah. didn't take much to make him crack. Um, okay, so um, that's a wistful look at the past, and now you've moved to uh, Pastor's new Tarek in Manchester. Pete, you've not managed to break orbit from planet Edinburgh. Um, any regrets about where you ended up and what water has flown over the course of time since the training day? I want to cry, <laughs> I want to cry now. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Pete, you go first. Uh, no, I'm, I am guess I'm quite happy with my lot in life in, in Edinburgh. Um, Managed to sneak off for a year to Singapore for a fellowship, which uh, much more favourable climate. Oh uh, yeah. As we know, climate doesn't really make you happy. So mm. no, I'm quite happy here. Uh, I'm sorry to see Tarek leave us though. Yeah, he's, he's got a habit of doing that. He, yeah, the he brain joins the yeah, he leaves. If it's not, I knew. Wherever I lay my hat, you know. Yes. Um, no, I moved from cloudy, rainy Edinburgh to cloudy rainy Manchester, so it, mm-hmm. I felt quite at home in Manchester, still feel quite at home in Manchester, so I do like the place. Good football uh, teams. Well, yeah, they've got football teams uh, for a start, so... Uh, <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, that's been good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you said <laughs> not to bring up football. It's <laughs> okay. one of your rules, do not bring up We've football. We've only got one listener in Leicester, yeah. so I don't, need, don't think we need to worry. Mate, that's where you're from, isn't Leicester? Well, I thought you should say that, Pete. Yeah, yeah it's a been a lot of uh, journey. Walker's Crisps. Uh, yes, and famously Gary Lineker, oh, okay, yeah. unless there's a the football else? team that you may or may uh, not yeah, be yeah. familiar with. From a few years back. Amy Vardy. Uh, <laughs> Amy <laughs> Vardy. <laughs> football club. Okay, we, we won't stray on to the uh, legal machinations of um, Leicester City football and the affiliated members thereof. But uh, I think it is interesting, um, the older you get, um, I'm talking about me, um, the more uh, it's interesting to look back to see what what that passage of time has taught us and join the thread between where we collectively came from and where we're going. And, and of course, Visions is all about where we're headed. So I guess out of the three of us, um, I'm closer to the reality of AMD. If I wanted to ask you about this, um, when you're in clinic and you see patients year of birth steadily approaching your own does that it's unsettling does that popped up in your psyche does that happen all the time now okay yeah when did that start happening about the same time I got uh, presbyopia because I then <laughs> realised I wasn't immortal and uh, the clock's ticking mm. yeah, so. yeah yeah so uh, that sort of existential Consideration is Tarek, how about you? Do you look I, at patient states? I, I don't, I Do you look at their details before you? I, I just look at images. You just look at it. So yeah. you're, you're really <laughs> you're taking it a step beyond. Um, uh, but in, in terms of age and 
and aging, uh, and if we were to envision the future, um, I would like if I were to develop AMD. Um, Neil Tarrick. <laughs> yeah, go on. Who would you want to say? Neil Tarrick. I'm looking at the two of you because uh, you're yeah, both very, very steady hands. Yeah. Uh, but this is the one I use for injecting this. Okay. From... And you're um, a little bit myopic or plain glass in your specs. I've got very focal. He hasn't even bothered to sort his refraction. Well, yeah. yeah. I've, I've got fine lenses. Yeah. So oh, toric content and you have to actually see. <laughs> what what the? These are these are my reading glasses. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> these are just to make you look intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> so that leaves me an outlier in terms of looking intelligent. But yeah. having said that, I'd I'd be happy with both of you, but I'd like um Tarek. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a bespoke service that um uh, possibly um, in the future would be tailored to my needs and uh, I'm not sure that we have that at the moment. Can I Pete? just in- interrupt here? Yeah. You, you, you're getting closer and unfortunately getting closer to, to, to the onset of Midway AMD. Thank you Pete. I, I'm not quite sure how close, <laughs> I don't know how old you are, but 79 is a mean age of onset. You is don't know how old I am. Happy birthday every <laughs> So. But you are getting closer, and at the moment we're struggling with capacity bow, and I, that that I don't think you makes squeeze me in. twitch like Inspector Dreyfus, but uh, oh Chief Inspector Dreyfus, twitch when I make capacity, <laughs> but capacity is an issue now, bow. Mm-hmm. So you can't get your bespoke treatment that you really want. So what you're gonna do? Have you got? Private health insurance. Well, that's why I've got I, tariffs I got t- on the <laughs> speed dial, Pete. Yeah. Um, because the, while special favours shouldn't be extended, um, I think um, there may be an argument. Actually, that's one thing yeah. I do have started doing. I'm not looking at patients' ages, but looking at trainees and thinking, who do I want to do my cataract? <laughs> yeah, that's one yeah, thing actually, I do. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. okay. So that, that, yeah. this is important because we are doing, you know. Going on to the fine details, doing a, a trying to do a bespoke service, but it's hard to do with the capacity. Mm. So, would you want your treatment extend at the moment in the NHS? Well, I'd like to think I'm uh, sufficiently far away for treatment extend to be a historic footnote, and that's that we're what I'm and that that's what I'm hoping for. Um, and surely um, we should be approaching AMD not from the perspective of closing the door after the horse has bolted, but preventing it to start with. I mean, is that realistic in our, well, in my lifetime? Yes, well, it, I think there are really exciting developments on it, especially with the, the one-off injection of a gene therapy to produce your energy vegetables. So maybe there'll be, a, maybe you could get at the age, a certain age, you could get your prophylactic gene therapy injection into the eye. Okay. And, uh, is that realistic, Terry? Do you think that's realistic, well, or is that what, <coughs> what we I, tell ourselves? I, I, I've, I've stopped trying to predict these things because I remember uh, when Apple produced this tablet called an iPad, and thinking nobody's going to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> and I see so many trials coming up in the early stages, and I find it very hard to predict which ones are going to get to the next stage, which ones are going to come out. Almost impossible. But there are lots of exciting things going on, and in general, we are moving gradually more towards newer treatments. It's nice to see newer treatments coming out now, but then there are also so many falling by the wayside yeah. and actually not progressing as fast as we would have liked to. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think we'll be moving towards less invasive care, put it that way. But how that's going to uh, pan out exactly, I just wouldn't like to say. But I would like to interject here and say that whilst in the UK we're looking for uh, less treatments in terms of uh, frequency of treatments and injections, the rest of the world, it's, it's their job and their livelihood. So in the same way as that film, that old eating comedy, The Man in the White Suit, where the man develops a suit which never wears out and never gets dirty. And in the, in the eating comedy, all the people in the factory and the people management don't want this product to come to life because they'll be out of jobs. In the same way, a one-off treatment, there won't be any medical retina jobs left anymore throughout the world. Yeah, but I'm okay, Pete. Because, because you're really retired, <laughs> so, yeah. I just think that, uh, <coughs> No, it'll be interesting to manage that transition, and I think yeah, that's exactly. one of the things that 
uh, new products have to compete with because we actually have set up our services now by and large to be really quite efficient in terms of getting the patients in, having in our unit optometrists look at them, having rapid access, having nurses doing the injections and patients by and large come in and come out and get quite regular injections in a really efficient way with very few uh, physical side effects and so when a new drug comes out that's mm. potentially better um, but might shake up that system a little bit, might need more tests, might need a doctor to see them at the beginning or, or because they've got more side effects might need a doctor to see them at another stage and it's quite difficult for the new mm. drugs to come through because, because we've got a nice effective treatment so I see what you're saying there. But then that, that means that progress is going to be hampered by the lack of interest in a disruptive diagnostic or tech or prophylactic or intervention or primary care measure because of a, a protective approach to the current model. So that the man in the white suit who famously featured Alec Guinness <laughs> yes, um, ended in an interesting way, but I don't want to spoil the ending because Tara yeah, probably no, no. <laughs> Tara has actually a very good movie. It's a very very good movie. Yeah, no, no. No. It's, it was out yeah. of the Ealing stadium. Right. Uh, right. um, yeah. yeah. But Tara doesn't watch black and white films. Yeah. Yeah. He's not that nostalgic. Yeah. Uh, but for listeners, it's a very good movie to watch. Okay, yeah. so a, a recommendation there from Pete, our movie buff, yeah. um, Barry Norman, aka Pete's Bogus Journey. Yeah. Is it as good as uh, Avengers Assemble? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slightly different genre, but it, right. maybe a theme there. But uh, but is that is that not a problem where we get to a point where we protect the status quo um, and inhibit progress, or is that just something that we have to cope with well, as a yeah. profession? Well, I think the pro- the progress will happen for it will be pushed through by pharmaceutical companies and tech companies to produce these products and they'll want a return from their investment uh, but eventually I think these products will come through and the service will have to change I think there will probably be some initial resistance with some people who as we pointed out re- rely on frequent treatments for their livelihoods but there will be uh, these, these products will come through so that's that's an interesting take so vested interests whether for um, a pharma company or whether it's a professional um, interest in maintaining the status quo might mean that just like the man in the white suit, if Tarek produces some interesting research in Manchester, that... We don't go too far. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, maybe not exactly. <laughs> Is that uh, <laughs> just but, leave it a research. But, but just as a thought experiment, that's, um, that's somebody who maybe looks like Tarek, um, but a lot younger and possibly in his prime, comes up with an intervention that prevents or reduces the rate of progression of AMD. Are we saying that that might be the white suit metaphor in? AMD. Okay. Exactly, but I think that uh, as uh, well, I won't do any spoilers. The man in the white suit, but I think that it, it probably will come to uh, fruition if it, if it is developed. Yeah, I think there will always be the burden that's increasing, isn't it, of patient care and the numbers of patients we mm. have, and that will also help drive the new technologies because I, because clinics are still burgeoning. We're still not recovered from COVID. We've got newer diagnoses coming out all the time. Newer pathologies we can treat um, and so we are going to need to find more efficient ways of mm. seeing these patients I, I, I think I've, I've, you know I regularly prove wrong in my thoughts I, I always thought that that uh, the potential for a drug to slow the progression dry MD wouldn't happen and now it's happened in the phase 3 study with the drug coming out next year and so a preventative drug is certainly a poss- potential possibility yeah, so the the current shape seems to be based around novel drugs, longer acting drugs, but nevertheless injections in the eye. So being close uh, to the age of onset, I don't necessarily want injections in the eye. From our perspective, we do it every day, or our nurses 
do injection this every day, but that must be pretty spooky for patients. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but we can see how important it is to get frequent injections, and the more injections that you have for what MD, the better your outcome. So this is another question for you about since you're the closest. <coughs> Do you want what, what would what, what would you want right now if you well, if you came to Tarek's clinic because you won't be coming to mine I guess Tarek's clinic tomorrow with what AMD would you want a monthly injection or an injection of the frequency that keeps your macula dry indefinitely because we know that any recurrence will re- result in loss of vision or would you want your bespoke treatment extended service um, or PRN which will get a what, what would you want right now because if you could tolerate an injection. Um, with yeah, the important yeah. word. The important word there is if. Yeah. Um, an injection can be tolerated, but then I think it's, it's going to be a nightmare patient. But then it's yeah. yeah. I'm, Are we I'm, looking at scans over your shoulder, throwing into Liverpool? <laughs> <laughs> but then it's the lesser of all the evils. All I'm saying is, in the future, and hopefully it will be some distance in the future, um, I would like to think um, there will be a way of addressing prevention far more effectively than we're doing at the moment. Okay, take an example. Um, uh, photomodulation. And uh, there's a Valida system. I know that you both were at, was it a your retina uh, mm-hmm. meeting? And uh, of course that is an intervention that doesn't require an injection. And um, may or may not, I'd be interested to hear your views as to whether that might be a minimally invasive or non-invasive way of a light-based therapy to reduce progression in this case of um, dry AMD or neovascular AMD, depending mm-hmm. on how the trials pan out. Pete, I you mean, go first. Certainly, proof in phase three studies <coughs> that it's effective. Would, uh, it would be fantastic to to use that in the clinics. Yeah, I think it's an interesting technology. Uh, to, to my mind, one of the key things about it is that it, it offers something potentially for people who don't have any other treatment. And this goes back to what you were alluding to earlier about seeing things from patients' perspectives because uh, I fear that that doctor-patient interaction is something that we can potentially lose in future because there'll be a greater patient load and more and more automation there's more um, rightly I think emphasis on non-medical staff seeing some aspects of patient care so ultimately the the interaction which we all probably went into medicine for which was being able to see patients and see the benefits um, might slowly start being lost and that's one thing I think that with the introduction of more technology we should try and fight against so that we have technology working for us um, rather than us working for technology. Mm. At the moment there's a danger at least from my experience of developing systems like AI systems um, that might automate some of the things uh, but then not helping us to have more time with the patient. Ideally, I think, if those systems can deal with some of the mundane aspects of care that we all have to do, like inputting data entry, for example. Well, I've heard you're, you're, the, uh, a new EPR system that may have made its way to Manchester is a nightmare. I, the term Element. data monkeys has uh, cropped up uh, quite a lot. So No one's called you a data monkey. <laughs> <laughs> That's outrageous. Back in the 70s, it was... 80s, 80s, <laughs> 80s, okay. Not so much the 70s. Because one of the couple of my bugbears have been brought up. First of all, is EPRs, and I'm actually really grateful that in Edinburgh we still have paper case notes. It's wow, like, I'd never. I love paper I'd case never notes thought that, that would because have been the you, case. you can find out instantly by flicking backwards and forwards in a couple of seconds what's going on with the patient. You write it in the notes and job done. No data, data entry uh, into a computer or, or minimal in the clinic on the system, but it's fantastic. Uh, in much the same way, I don't like a Kindle because I like a paperback. Because if I, if I pick up a Kindle two days later, I can't remember where I'm in the book or what's happening. A paperback, you can find out instantly. Although you did complain that you couldn't read my writing well, not so long ago. Well, it's because you were writing in Egyptian hieroglyphics, I think. Thank you, yeah. Pete. It's probably because you weren't wearing your presbyopic <laughs> correction. <laughs> uh, I would possibly. But having yeah. said that, 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 is, that is an interesting take on... Uh, 
current uh, status quo and future technology. But in terms of uh, hanging on to old tech, because we're either Luddite about it or because we're a little bit anxious about it or because we can't actually see the benefit. Uh, maybe um, paper notes, romantic as they are, um, will need to be superseded. And I'd like to think when I'm at the end of either your very lengthy waiting list, yeah. Pete, or fast-tracked through to Tarek's <laughs> clinic, that um, from the patient perspective, yeah. I wouldn't A, be waiting because of an EPR glitch or an AI-related glitch, 